uh, with the uh, uh, statement about uh, uh, this, uh, this theorem that uh, all the uh, count actually satisfies all of the revised axioms. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to look at voting in an internet setting. So what kind of voting do you think is the most prevalent, which is essentially voting on the internet? What do people vote for on the internet? What is the most common when people express who is better or what is better, A or B? What do you think? What is the what are the candidates? Some sort of marketplace. Exactly. So which product is the best, right? So um, you can think about uh, ranking as a form of uh, voting, right? For example, on Amazon and uh, all uh, and many multitude other uh, web services, uh, you have customer feedback. So how does customer feedback work? Uh, the voting lists in most of the cases that the, the best describes the practice is the number of stars, one, two, three, four, five stars, right? Uh, and this list now corresponds to a product. The, right, then you have another product. One, two, three, four, five stars. And then voters uh, can choose, uh, for example, if they vote for movies, whether they give it four star or a three star rating, right? And uh, then the system somehow has to aggregate all of these votes to find an objective uh, value of the product, which can be fractional, you know, say uh, product one has five, four and a half stars on average. Right? So uh, it's extremely, this is extremely important, right? Because people make daily decision what to buy, very often swayed by the customer feedback uh, for, uh, for the same product. Now, whenever money is involved, uh, what happens with voting? Uh, Bias. Whenever money is involved, people try to manipulate, uh, right? So if you are selling something, you get all of your buddies uh, to log in <coughs> and to trash the competitor's products and uh, give you five stars uh, for your own product, right? So there is a... Uh, um, a lot of actually collusion going on in which a group of uh, people tries to uh, change the outcome of which product is the better, which one will receive more stars uh, at the end uh, by colluding uh, and uh, trying to read the outcome of this election essentially because here you have a, a for each on each voting list you have a, a five candidates uh, and you are voting for candidate one two three four or five depending how many stars you want to give to product number one so this is in effect aggregation of the votes uh, is in fact an election right now so what we want to do is uh, we want to make the voting aggregation as robust against uh, malicious manipulation as possible. 
Now, how do we do that? Well, people went to incredible lengths uh, trying to defeat these. Uh, so, for example, uh, if suddenly lots of waters in a relatively short period of time cast unusual votes consistent and unusual votes to uh, what was the previous aggregate value, then these votes tend to be discarded by the system, right? But it's extremely hard to actually make the system robust. And uh, what I'm going to show you is a system that actually we developed at UNSW, uh, my PhD student, uh, uh, developed this system. So I'll show you how uh, the voting can be made more robust. And we are going to run a simulation, uh, hopefully today, if we have enough time. And I like to joke that the voting aggregation system uh, comes straight out from the Bible. How's that? Right? So <clears throat> how does the voting aggregation? So you understand uh, um, how voting goes here. So here is, uh, for example, four, five. Right, and we now want to total somehow the all the votes. So this guy voted like this. Guy number two or girl number two voted in maybe uh, this way, and you have a whole bunch of voters. And we want to make the aggregation as robust for collusion as possible. Um, what is the underlying premise? The underlying premise uh, is uh, that uh, if people are colluding, they will try to change the outcome for just a few products. And they will most likely uh, vote randomly on uh, for other products. So for it, why would they vote for other products? Because the systems, uh, uh, to make them more robust, take votes into account only if you have already cast uh, uh, several votes. Uh, if you are just a newcomer from a new IP address and you uh, vote for just uh, uh, one product or two products uh, in one go, uh, your votes will not count, so you have to earn, uh, the, in some sense, uh, uh, some reputation in order for your votes to count. So knowing that uh, colluding uh, uh, voters will vote for a bunch of other products as well that they are not interested in, but in all likelihood they are going to vote in some more or less random pattern, right? And uh, make sure they vote. Uh, uh, as did it for the competing products. So how do we aggregate these votes in a robust way? First, what we can do is uh, on each of the lists, uh, we can total for all of the votes. Uh, so the candidates are one, two, three, four, and five stars. And say this one got uh, uh, three votes, uh, two got five votes, uh, three got <coughs> 15 votes, four got uh, uh, maybe four votes, and five got, say, uh, one vote. <coughs> so what you can compute now for each of these votes, uh, what fraction in go it got, right? So let's see, in total we have eight. Uh, 8, uh, uh, 12, 13, uh, 28, right? So this got, number 1 got 3 over 28, uh, 2 got 5 over 28, uh, here we have 15 over 28, 4 over 28, and 1 over 4, uh, 20, uh, 
of 20 acres, right? And you do the very same uh, for each of other uh, lists, right? Now, Alex, yes. Under three, it says 15 and 25. Sorry? Under three, it says 15 and 25. Oops, sorry. 28. Thank you. Okay, so simply we find for each of the candidate for each of the candidates, so to speak, which fraction of the vote we got. So this was, uh, to, so to speak, uh, flow of information from voters to the candidates. Now the Bible comes into the play. I'm not religious at all, but uh, uh, somehow my students remember this quote from, from the Bible because it says, uh, uh, do not judge, else you will be judged by the very same measure. So if you judge people, you will be judged yourself by the same measure. And that's exactly what we are going to apply here. You see, now we will turn the flow of information this way. Yeah? And every voter will get some total. So the voter, oops, let me be consistent with the picture. Um, so voter number one, we can see how his candidates fared. So here he voted for four. So this is four over 28. Uh, say here he voted for three and three got 17 uh, over um, uh, 28, uh, right? So now voter V1 will get uh, its uh, credibility. So let's call it cred, which of voter uh, one is equal uh, 4 over 28 plus 17 over 28 plus and so forth depending on how many links, uh, sorry, how many lists uh, there are. So which voters uh, are going to get high credibility rank? Exactly. Those that vote are in compliance with the sentiment of the majority, right, will get high scores of credibility. Right? Now what we can do in the so it's the same voting, it's just iterative algorithm in terms of aggregation. Notice here we gave one vote for all of the choices. In the next round iteration, each vote counts <coughs> uh, the credibility of the voter. Right? So now it is no longer the case that this will be just a single vote. Yes. Why is 17 over 28? So because uh, uh, the number one voted for four here and for three here, and I just as an example gave a, a four over 28 to four and assumed that the same, uh, you know, in the same kind of in the account here, three got 17 over 28. So uh, you sum up, the fractions of the votes that this particular voter, uh, that this particular choice got, uh, right? So how does it work? It's very simple. So first what you do, you simply total each of the choices, how many votes uh, it got. Here in the first round of iteration, every vote is worked one. So everyone gets the same one vote. 
So then you compute for each candidate what fraction of the votes he got. And then you now flow information from these, now each voter. So first voters judge the product, but now voters will be judged according how they voted. Each voter will get, so credibility, <coughs> credibility of voter I is simply sum of all fractions of uh, voter of uh, uh, of uh, votes his choice candidate got right um, so first every vote is vote word one we total the votes divided by a total number of votes and we do this for every uh, list so this guy voted for three here right and now in this opposite direction the credibility of each voter will be equal to the sum total across all the lists of the fraction of votes that the candidates that he voted for got. So as this lady noticed, those that vote in accordance with the sentiment of the majority, if they vote for the choices uh, lots of other people vote, will have large uh, credibility, right? Now, in the next round of iteration, this guy will no longer get just uh, um, one vote. So, in the next round of iteration, right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, voter one. Right, will give uh, to how was it number four the score of uh, uh, whatever his credibility of uh, one is. Now, in this way, uh, the choices uh, that are made uh, by people with high credibility will ha get higher scores. Uh, and what we do, we keep iterating this process until the ranks stabilize. In this way, what happens is, as we will see now, uh, okay, this is kind of just the intuition in order to guarantee that this algorithm will converge and that it will converge fa reasonably fast we have to a little bit uh, improve this schema, but this back and forth algorithm, iterative algorithm, is what's behind. Yes? Uh, doesn't the system kind of punish uh, voters who just have unpopular opinions by chance? That's exactly right. So you see, when you aggregate, that's a very good question. You see, all depends what you are trying to get, right? Here, the, the claim is <coughs> not that you get uh, the most objective values, because what is the most objective value, uh, after all, in most of the things, right, even in the products? We get this in the most accurate way, the prevailing sentiment of the community. And in the prevailing sentiment, of course, outliers uh, that might be more um, accurate in their ranking uh, will be uh, will be um, will be punished, right? So this is to extract in the most accurate way the prevailing sentiment. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Uh, on a similar thread, is it possible then to also gain the system by consistently voting with the um, with the majority in a bunch of votes, and then just also vote okay, with very good. So in order, so there is no silver bullet, right? In order to subvert this system, you can do the following: you vote the, for the most popular uh, items in all of the uh, lists, and then you attack. However, to do that, uh, you have to know what are the most popular things, right? And uh, there is no silver bullet. It uh, makes it just harder because when people try to attack, unless they know how the system works, they are probably not going to pay attention how they vote for irrelevant things for them and just attack. But certainly, uh, you know, there is no silver bullet uh, for this. Now, we did use this algorithm, and even though I promised uh, to the conference chair I will not be mentioning it, uh, I'm going to break this because it's so juicy. <laughs> so, a friend of mine was, was a conference chair for a major AI conference, right? And. Uh, Guess what the candidates were? They were the papers, and each paper was uh, read by uh, between three to five referees, right? And then the votes were aggregated to decide which papers to accept. Hmm? So guess what? Uh, we ran this algorithm on the referees' votes. And about one third of the referees got final credibility rank close to zero. <laughs> and my friend was amazed and he said, that's not possible, your algorithm is ballooning. So he himself, even though it was hundreds of papers, he started comparing the referee reports uh, with his own assessment, and he was amazed that actually one third of the people did lousy job. Why did they do lousy job? I can tell you several reasons. First, people are very busy in academia because they have to, to churn silly papers for other conferences to keep their jobs, right? So any moment you devote to referee other people's papers is uh, a lost job, a uh, lost uh, time for uh, your own churning papers. Uh, but there is even more malicious element. You know, people hold grudges, right? And uh, they tend to punish uh, papers submitted by uh, people they don't like, right? Even if you do blind refereeing, people are pretty good at guessing whose paper is whose paper according to the previous work. But there is another uh, thing that very, very seldom happens in academia, namely some referees might think that they are only smart people in the universe, right? And everyone else is thus producing lousy papers, and they give systematically bad marks to everyone because they are so unsmart. Of course, you don't believe that this can happen in academia, right? You don't. Uh, so, um, so this, so, but uh, what, uh, who had uh, here a, a, a very good objection that this punishes good outliers? You're, you're a, this is actually very good observation, and this very feature can be used to make deductions. How, which deductions you make? This we also used to aggregate uh, data from market analysts. So you know each market analyst can give you five advices about the stock. It's either strong sell, sell, hold, buy, and strong buy, right? You can run this algorithm to see what's the prevailing vote, right? Then you compare the outcome of your algorithm with the past history of the market analysts. Whose advice will you follow? What is the optimal choice? What do you think? The outlier is telling you what everyone else is not telling you. 
exactly the outlier who has good past record. Huh? Because he actually figures out, so this algorithm is uh, just produces a signal, but how you are going to interpret the signal, it's up to you. So for example, if you run it for the market analysts, and of course people keep uh, history track of past performance of analysts, of whether uh, how the uh, share price changed, uh, how correlated it was with his opinion, right? And you are looking for people who are who were highly correlated in the past, but are outliers compared to the what the crowd thinks, right? So you can use this algorithm for multiple purposes, um, but if you use it to invest, it's at your own risk. I <laughs> Um, <coughs> Alex, yes. Like, what if I start like the attack from the very beginning, like vote every like all like give like all of the votes to A, and uh, in that way, like all of the votes after the initial attack will be. Okay, so that's a very good. So you see, the thing is uh, uh, that, as I say, there is no silver bullet, but this is not very credible as a tax because simply the Amazon runs for ages. So it's impossible, you know, uh, it has such a long history, right, of votes, so that starting from the very beginning is simply impossible. Of course, you can kind of build up, uh, but uh, uh, you have to, then you are working against the majority, so it's, uh, Look, there is no silver bullet. All what this does is makes it harder to screw the system, especially to game the system, especially, um, you know, that if people don't know how the scores are uh, aggregated, right? So there are, okay, so let's see. We have about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, left, um, <coughs> yeah, if I, it will take me probably this much time to set up the, um, the system. So we will run a simulation uh, uh, next time on Thursday, right? Let me just tell you how you have to tweak the system to make it uh, uh, reliable. Uh, first of all, uh, rather than using uh, fractions, uh, so you will get uh, um, the votes of uh, what you do is uh, you divide, uh, so here we divided uh, uh, this with uh, sum of the, uh, with the number of votes. <coughs> But this doesn't work very well. <coughs> what works is uh, you divide uh, each voter with uh, um, a square root of uh, n1 squared plus n2 squared plus, plus uh, well, in this case, it will be n5 uh, <coughs> squared. So uh, here, with the ratios, they sum up to 1. Instead, what you want is that sum of the squares sum up to 1. Why is this so? Well, because as if you have patience to look through the proof, which is in one of these papers uh, that is on the web page, uh, it simply makes the proof converge of convergence work. <coughs> and I'll tell you another thing about this proof of convergence, right? The proof of convergence is very cute. So if you are a mathematician, look at this. Uh, it uses kind of really neat idea to prove convergence of the algorithm. But when we wanted to publish the paper, the bloody editor-in-chief forced us to take out the proof because computer scientists apparently don't like proofs. 
So what can I do? We took out the proof, but the version that is on this uh, uh, archive, you know, this repository of preprints uh, has the proof and that's what's on the web page. And then from there on, when we were devising other algorithms, we stopped bothering proving their convergence because you don't get the, the proof anyhow published and uh, uh, so turns uh, papers into cabbage, but that's okay. So um, the other thing is uh, you want to do a little bit of amplification of this credibility. So instead of summing the ranks of items uh, that uh, the voter voted for, what you do is uh, your credibility is obtained as uh, summing the ranks and then taking them to a power alpha and the best alpha is between two and three. You see, higher is the alpha, more you punish the outliers. So you have to kind of find the balance between uh, resistance against the collusion and not punishing too much the, um, the outliers because if you punish too much the outliers it will start looking more and more as a simple majority vote uh, and you don't want that. But so these are the two only uh, little changes that you have to make to the algorithm and you will see uh, next time how remarkably uh, robust against collision is uh, if the colluding guys uh, vote attack say the ranking of a particular object and uh, but the vote randomly for other objects so that will be the thing that we are going to look uh, next time so we will run the algorithm uh, and after that we will do the following uh, uh, thing which is really important for our data aggregation in many uh, fields from wireless uh, uh, sensor networks to stock prices uh, notice that this works only on discrete sets uh, what if the, rather than from one to five stars uh, what if the uh, values are actually uh, real numbers. Uh, how do we aggregate them? Uh, and that's really important. Let me ask you the following question before we finish in five minutes. You have 10 instruments. You know that on average, uh, one has deviation of one unit, one has deviation of half a unit on average, and uh, one has deviation of five units on average and you have to measure particular voltage. What is the way to obtain the most accurate reading? What would you do? So one has deviation. The one that has smallest deviation. Well, yes, what? This is not the case. The best to do is to use, to make measurement with all three instruments and then make a weighted average that is with weights that are reciprocals of the variances. <coughs> this is called maximum likelihood estimation and it is absolutely fundamental. So what we are going to do is uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimations and uh, how to do aggregation of continuous uh, data and this is applied to sensor networks, to stock prices, and all other things. Please read the notes, uh, if nothing else, because it took me forever to write them. Right? <laughs> so the material, there are no midterms, and uh, there will be a final write. So don't let the material go by uh, you with a uh, new Slack, because the, um, we will cover huge amount of fundamentally important algorithms for practice and some of them will be very sophisticated so please read carefully the notes and uh, we continue from there next time.